Good day everyone and welcome to the Canadian Math Kangaroo Contest sample video about questions on fractions. This is suitable for about grade four level and today we will be talking about the one the dreaded topic of fractions. Here's a question that is fairly intuitive just to start off with. Consider the following rectangular region covered by square shaped tiles. Let's consider each of these things separately. So again, you don't have to color it on one single picture. You can consider these separately. Color one fifth of this area in red. Color a sixth of this area in blue. Color one thirtieth of this area in yellow. Color six thirtieth of this area in green. And finally, color five thirtieth in purple. So please pause the video right now, take a piece of paper, draw yourself this six by five rectangle and figure out what each of these would be. Probably draw five copies of this rectangle and color the appropriate things in the appropriate colors before you go on. I recommend pausing this video. All right, let's take it up together. As mentioned, we have five times six equals 30 squares in total. So one fifth is just one row, right? We don't have to count out the six squares. We can just say, hey, five rows in total, one fifth of the area is just one of the five rows. Let's color it in red. Similarly, if I'm thinking one sixth and I'm looking at six columns, I'm just considering one column to be blue for part B. For part C, 1 30th, as mentioned, 30 happens to be the number of squares in our figure. So 1 30th is just one of the squares colored in, in yellow, just like so. 6 30th is, of course, six squares out of the 30, but we can more readily think of it, once again, as 1 5th. So once again, we're asked to color one row, and it is going to be green this time. Right, we can see this because we can see that 6 30th is the same as 1 5th. We just have to divide top and bottom by 6, which we're allowed to do with fractions without changing the fraction. And finally, coloring 5 30ths in purple is the same as coloring 1 6th in purple, which, as previously mentioned, is just coloring one of the columns. How do we know this? Again, we can simplify top and bottom, divide by 5, and we would get 1 over 30 divided by 5, which is 6. 1 over 6, 1 sixth, one of our six columns. If we did not make that assumption or we did not make that connection, we can, of course, just color five squares randomly willy-nilly, but frankly, that's less elegant of a solution. So here's a study note to summarize what we just learned. We can always multiply or divide both the numerator and the denominator, both the top of the fraction and the bottom of a fraction, by the same number, and that will not change the fraction in any way whatsoever. It will just make it friendlier for us to work with if we do it correctly. Right? For example, I remember we had 5 thirtieths, which is 1 sixth. We can divide top and bottom by 5 to give ourselves that this is just 5 over 5 equals 1 over 30 over 5, which is 6. Let's try another question and let's, let's keep in mind what we just learned. So which of the following is closest to 1 half? Is it 2 thirds, 2 fifths, 3 halves, 5 halves, or 2 quarters? Take a minute now, pause this video, solve, and come back once you think you have an answer. Let's go through a solution together. Ready? To compare fractions, we need them to have the same denominator, which we would call the common denominator. Sometimes called least common multiple as well, if we think about what we're doing. Because how are we going to get the common denominator? We will multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the same number, not changing the fraction, just like we saw before, but making it friendlier for us to see right away what's going on. So how can I achieve a common denominator? You'll notice it is just going to be the least common multiple of the denominators of the participating fractions. So for example, in the first case, if we are taking 2 thirds, our first fraction, and considering where it is to 1 half in relation to 1 half, we can imagine a number line, 
or we can convert these to a common denominator so that we can see right away what's going on. So a common denominator here would be six because we have a denominator of two and a denominator of three. So let's take our two thirds, multiply top and bottom by two to give ourselves four over six. And let's compare that to one half, which we know is just half of six, so three over six. We can see four sixths is bigger than three sixths. So we know that two thirds is about one sixth, well, actually exactly one sixth bigger than a half. Similarly, if we look at two fifths and one half, we want a common denominator here too. We've got denominators of five and two. So I sense that our common denominator is going to have to be a 10. Now, how do we convert two fifths into something with a denominator of 10? Easy, we multiply top and bottom by two. So two fifths is the same thing as four tenths. We just kind of divided our five pieces into even smaller pieces, right? One half we know as five over 10, half of 10. And so we see that four tenths is less than five tenths. So two fifths is slightly less than one half. Well, what about three halves? There's no need for a common denominator there. We already have one, it's two. Right? We know that three halves being a whole of something and then another half is way bigger than one half. Similarly for five halves, right? This is really 2.5 if you like to speak in decimal. We've got two whole things and then another half, way bigger than just one half. And finally, two quarters, if we think about converting it to a common denominator, that is one half. We can divide top and bottom by two and see right away that that's true. So which of these is closest to one half? The fraction that happens to be one half, the two quarters, being exactly equal to one half. So what have we learned here? A common denominator is a number that is divisible by each of the denominators of the participating fractions. We saw that on previous slides, right? Uh, for example, if we had two thirds and one half, we look at the denominators, we see a denominator of three and a denominator of two. The common denominator will be six. As I mentioned previously, this is the least common multiple or the LCM that you may have seen in class already. Um, if I have, for example, three tenths and one fifth, the common denominator will just be 10, right? We don't have to reach any further. We can just keep one fraction as it is, 3 tenths, and multiply the other fraction, 1 over 5, by 2 over 2 to give us 2 tenths. Similarly, if we have 1 quarter and 1 sixth, a lot of people are going to be reaching for large denominators, like 24 or 48 or something like that, but a common denominator of just 12 will do the trick much better. 12 can be divided by both 4 and by 6. It is the least common multiple of those two. And straight away, we can convert our fractions. One quarter will have to be multiplied by three over three, will become three twelfths. And one sixth by two over two will become two twelfths. We can see that these fractions differ by just one twelfth right away. Let's try another question. Find the numbers A and B such that their sum, A plus B, equals 15. And their factor, A over B, is closest to one half might even be one half. So take a second now, try and think of two positive numbers, A and B. Let's not do any fractions here, just whole numbers will do, such that they add up to 15. And if we divide them, the answer is gonna be closest to one half. Again, pause the videos you need and come back once you have an answer. Once you're convinced that your brain isn't just saying, ah, I know the answer without actually figuring it out. Are we ready? All right, well, let's see what we can get. Uh, if A over B is one half, or approximately one half, we don't know yet, that would mean that 2A would have to be equal to B. All right, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. But really what I did was I cleared away the denominators, as we sometimes say. I realized that I could multiply both sides of the equation by b, multiply both sides of the equation by 2, and what I would have left is 2a equals b. At the same time, we are told that a plus b equals 15, 
But now we have a far more convenient way of writing B. B is just two times A. So we replace that and we see that A plus 2A from our first equation must equal 15 by our second equation. Well, 3A is 15. Easy pickings for what A is. A is 5. What does that mean? It means that B being 2 times A is just 10. And indeed, we can get A over B as close to 1 half as possible. We can get it to be exactly 1 half by taking A equals 5, B equals 10. Their sum will give us 15. Their factor will give us 1 half. So what did we learn here? If we multiply or divide both sides of an equation by the same number, just like with the fractions, we won't be changing the equation. This is a ridiculously useful trick that we'll see you all the way into university, right? We can even apply the same logic to inequalities, but there we have to be careful about negative numbers, something like minus one. For now, focusing on equalities. How did we convert A over B into being one, uh, equals one half into being 2A equals B? Well, we multiply both sides by 2B, right? On the left-hand side, the B's would cancel, as we say, and we would just get A times 2, being 2A. On the other hand, on the right-hand side, we would have 1 half times 2B. Again, the 2's will cancel this time. 1 times B is just B, and that's how we get our 2A. Many of you in your classes might also see this as a cross-multiplication thing. The idea that if you see a fraction like that, we multiply across the, uh, the equal sign. A times 2 equals B times 1. That's another way. It's just a quick mnemonic for what we're really doing, which is multiplying by a common denominator. That's it for today. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this class, and I hope to see you in one of the live classes someday soon. Have a great day. Bye.